you know, so, you know, we know the Jews control the media, we know they control the newspapers. Um, what is NPR going to do to make sure that there are no Jews in NPR? And, and they're like, well, what we're going to do is we're going to make sure we have no reporters in Israel. Like, they'll go along with it, and, and uh, you're, you're making them live up to their own book of rules. We need more of that. We need more people out there to, to if you really want to expose them, just caricature them by carrying them to outlandish extremes. Because they're their own acorn. Acorn. The reason when Hannah sent me that text, a Facebook message, it wasn't a Facebook message. I meet most of the people I work with on Facebook. When, and when Hannah sent me a Facebook message and said, let's pose as a prostitute, the reason why that's so brilliant is it forced Acorn, forced them to play their hand. It forces them to say, no, I'm sorry, we can't work with prostitutes. Are they going to say that? They have to say that. They have to say that. If Acorn doesn't say that, then then I've got an explosive video on my hands. So, journalism. Journalism is putting people in situations where they're forced to react and you're reporting on what they say. <coughs> journalism is not standing up at a podium and writing down what the person says to you. That's not journalism, that's stenography. Next question. You better let uh, oh, Christian, because yeah. we're, we're about to end the time here, so maybe let him get in with yeah. questions. <laughs> <laughs> Hartsock. I work with James on uh, multiple projects on uh, the Teachers Unions Gone Wild. We recently released a video, a music video called Lantern Dance, where we satirized the, uh, the mainstream media uh, or establishment press, as James likes, likes to call it. Um, and uh, we worked on multiple other projects to continue to do so. Now, I'm, I'm 24. I'm from a, a generation that was lied to. I grew up in the San Francisco Bay Area. <laughs> And that's why I'm a conservative. <laughs> now, I wasn't very political growing up. My, my family was, you know, they didn't force any agenda on me. We didn't really talk about politics all that much. But let me tell you something. I came of age uh, during the Bush administration. And this, this uh, brings me back to something that the bill <coughs> uh, mentioned. Um, I was not necessarily conservative or liberal. But I saw one thing, and I saw the absolute pathological hate, pathological hatred among my peers, my teachers, and good people. These were good, decent people. These were my best friends, my girlfriends, my teachers, who I loved and I looked up to. These people were capable of this pathological, absolutely pathological and sociopathic, literally sociopathic hatred for a good man. I could not, for the life of me, understand it. I, I, I had absolutely no idea how to interpret this. So I began, it, it was at that point that I started to see through the leftist agenda that I was being acculturated with and that my peers were being acculturated with. And I loved my, my teachers. I had the utmost respect for them. But I remember, I, I, I realized I need to start doing my own research. And I remember, um, I remember my, my history teacher, a sophomore year of high school, uh, gave us this big, you know, she was talking about uh, this whole seminar, this whole thing on the Cold War. And we were using textbooks from 1987 that predated the release of the Bonona Cables, which, which uh, corroborated everything that Joe McCarthy uh, uh, had said. Um, but there was no mention of that. So she, uh, I remember she uh, assigned us a three-page paper to, uh, to talk about what a, what a a vicious demagogue, drunken demagogue, Joe McCarthy was. So I turned in a 15-page paper defending Joe McCarthy. <laughs> <laughs> so this is where I started to find my voice. Um, and you know, I've always been a passionate filmmaker. Uh, that's always been my number one passion is film. Uh, and I, I felt that when I moved to LA and started making films, why well, I, I should probably keep my 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 politics on the DL. But let me tell you something. God has been good to me. Because I've been doing very well as a filmmaker, and, I, and, and I, I do not hide what I believe. I can't imagine being in a position where I would, where I would be able to do that. And I found that it has is, it is built more bridges than it has burned them. And this is something, there's a, you, know, you know, Ben Shapiro just released a book, and it's, you know, in, very, in many ways very uh, discouraging in, in terms of what it exposes uh, in Hollywood. Um, but I have an optimism. I have found that at the end of the day, people respect talent 
uh, if you can reach them. And one of my problems with, cons with, with, with conservative activists who go out and make films, or Christian activists who go out and make films, you know, the, the thing to do is to focus on the quality, the content. Uh, John Lennon, who was the, um, one of the most influential voices in the New Left, I don't actually believe that he woke up every day and said, how can I write a song that, that, that advances the leftist agenda? I think he happened to be a brilliant musician, and he happened to be a leftist. That is the approach we need to take when it comes to uh, conservative art, uh, you know, or, or, or working within the art and entertainment uh, industry and the film industry um, as a conservative. Now, uh, one of the things I also noticed when I was growing up, um, and you know, having grown up in the Bay Area, I was on the front lines of this. We live in a country amongst a liberal elite that does not want a United States of America. They want a divided communities of America. And it's very poetic that our president is, is a former community organizer. Because that is the way they see the country. I think, you know, we, you know the, the left likes to change names from socialist to progressive to, you know, liberal back to progressive, like an escaped convict uh, fleeing from state to state. Uh, but I think the most accurate uh, description is collectivist, because that is how they see the world. They don't see you as individuals, they see you as a collective, and that's how they want you to see yourselves. That is how they manage to, uh, to community organize this country. And you're, you're, not, uh, you're not Rafat Ali, uh, you're, 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 you're you know, a, a Muslim, part of the Muslim community. You're not, you know, whoever. You're, I mean, you're, you're, you're part of the gay community. And, and you need us to help you. It's that, that famous Jerry Maguire line, help us help you. But without us, you are screwed. That is how they see the world. And let me tell you something. James mentioned uh, when I went down to Palm Springs, uh, and I, I went up to it was a, it was a it was an event being headlined by Van Jones, um, and it was uh, it was organized by Common Cause, which is a leftist um, organization, and Code Pink was there. You know all the uh, all the unions were there being busted. I went up to these people. It was an all white crowd, and I asked them. I, I asked these people didn't know each other. Okay, they were all there for a common cause. And I asked these people uh, a question. I asked them, you know, what should we do with Clarence Thomas after we impeach him? These people did not know each other, but, but their responses all seemed to harbor a common motif. String him up. Lynch him. String his wife up, too. Let's get rid of Jenny. Send him back to the fields. This is what these people think. This is how these people think. I grew up with it, and I was not the least bit surprised when I found what I found on that, on that day. Okay, these people, uh, Clarence Thomas, <laughs> a, a black man, how dare he, how dare he not, not conform to our narrative? And I think there, I, I, you see this arrogance, the way they react against their organized communities when their organized communities act, you know, out of line. After 70% of blacks in California voted for Proposition 8, what was the left's reaction? After everything we have done for you. This is the arrogance, this is the narcissism, these are the double standards, the absolute hypocrisy. And it's being caught right on videotape. And, 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 and you, know, you know, I think the all these videos where we expose hypocrisy and double standards on the left, I think that we are by default taking down the mainstream media because I see it kind of like these, you know, the Daily Coast and MSNBC, they flock to these stories like mosquitoes to a bug zapper because the, the way they report on these stories, they trip over themselves. They pointed at me, these were, these were an all white, I found at that protest in Palm Springs within Four hours, everything that they have been making up about the Tea Party for two prior.